How's it going, ladies and bursts? I'm Bobby Six, and welcome back to Corpse Factory. Uh, so Tomoe is going on, is dating Shinya now. Uh, uh, our friend Aoi is about to start work with us at our apartment, at our office, and the lady that we just killed uh, was an executive at our office, and we've got a man that we've tried to get killed, that, we've, that we're trying to kill as well. That's up to scratch. Let's get up to speed. Let's carry on, shall we? I spent all morning trying un unsuccessfully to calm my nerves. She's nervous about, you know, having another orgasm on a bathroom floor about killing someone. I'm anxious about finding out whether my latest victim has perished. It's afternoon now, so the time written on his photo has passed. If my work was successful, I should know soon enough. I've already set up an obituary news alert on my phone to keep me informed. Instead of sitting at home all day and waiting for my phone to go off, I decided to visit an old favourite hangout. Public libraries don't get the credit they deserve in this age. They're quiet, calm, soothing. I can sit here for hours, for free, and just get lost in different worlds. Plus, I always carry works from my favourite authors. Sometimes the librarians are even kind enough to recommend titles that might fit my tastes. I don't feel judged here. Nobody looks at me and mocks my clothing or my makeup. Nobody looks at me and asks if I've had enough to eat lately. Nobody makes fun of me. That lonely girl in the corner reading Lovecraft and calmly stroking her hair. Every so often I put my book aside and check my phone out of habit. Still no alerts. Have I miscalculated something? Did my latest photo not look convincing? Or damning enough to inspire suicide or murder? I find myself growing increasingly anxious and impatient. Cthulhu, huh? You a Lovecraft nerd? I blink twice to look up at the strange man standing over me. Huh? Sauce. Didn't mean to interrupt. Notice you're reading Lovecraft. Huh. Japanese too. Souls? Did you just say souls at me? Didn't know this book had been translated. Uh, yeah. My English isn't great, so I read the translated version. My English isn't great either, to be fair. <laughs> That's mad. Do they translate esoteric names? Can't imagine Cthulhu being easy to write in kanji. <laughs> I'm curious now. Cthulhu. It'd be like, Ku, Tu, Hu, Ku Tu Hu, or Ku Tu, something like that. I don't know. Well, it's written in katakana, so. Obviously. Of course, Kojiro. The man extends a hand, and I can't tell if he wants me to shake it or pass him by pass him my book. What? I'm Kojiro. You? Noriko, Kurosawa. Nice. Just Kojiro for me. No last name. Call me Koji. You don't have a last name? Used to. Lost it. Fire, you know. I'm just Kojiro now. You lost your last name in a fire? <laughs> How the fuck does that happen? This guy's weird. His clothes smell like they've been stashed in the back of a closet for a decade or two. His face is unshaven and his eyes are scarily clear and focused, despite being masked by a pair of thick glasses. Um... Didn't mean to keep you. Saws again. Uh, I'm looking for Nobel Sinclair. He around here? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Who? Writer guy. Did that book about befriending the dead? The librarian told me to check these shelves. Sorry, I don't really know. No worries. I'll find him. You know, you look like the type who'd enjoy his books. Not to judge you by your I was your gonna color. say, you fucking pigeonholing me? You stereotyping me? Um... Need a strong stomach, though. Messed up shit. As much as I hate to admit it, this stranger has captured my interest. How messed up are we talking? Oh. Well, his first book describes dressing up corpses, taking them to dinner. Goal is to not get caught out. Mad, right? Like something out of that American movie. Weaken with Bernard? Something like that. Second book goes nuts. Main character fills the school classroom with bodies, all dressed up as students. Runs lectures and records them, puts them online. <laughs> Best part? No one can figure out if these books are fiction. <laughs> Internet says Nobel Sinclair actually did these things. Says he's doing time now, writing these books as a confession. Interesting. Right? It's deranged. Makes for a good bedtime reading. <laughs> You a noise? Well, of course you are. 
Uh, yeah. You? Yeah. At Koji Koji. Add me if you like. We can talk shop. I'm gonna find Obel. Wish me luck. Without so much as a glance back at me, the man walks away. I try to return to my reading, but the whole conversation just replays back in my head. What a bizarre encounter. Maybe I'll just head home for today. Being here has helped me calm down, but I'm still eagerly anticipating the fate of my victim. Besides, I have to admit that I'm growing a little bit hungry. Maybe onigiri. A rice ball from the convenience store will tide me over until tomorrow. I gather my things and stand up, letting out a little whew as I stretch my muscles. As I head toward the sliding doors to leave the library, a little alert sounds from my phone. <laughs> this is it. My phone is in my hands in less than a second, the screen unlocked, and the obituary page loading before my eyes. Articles posted online today, 2.39pm. Keywords found, Mr. Accident, Numerical Data Range 20-30. to 30. Image data found, yes. Saturday, May 30. Mr. Aichi Hanada, 22 of Tokyo Prefecture, was pronounced dead this afternoon at a traffic intersection. 12.02pm, coroner's report, office reports that Mr. Hanada was involved in a traffic accident. No other casualties have been reported. Mr. Hanada is survived by his fiancée, who wishes to remain anonymous. A funeral service has not yet been arranged. View image attachment? I quickly load the image attachment and can't believe my eyes. The photo is the exact same one that was sent to me through Corpse Girl's website. There can be absolutely no doubt that this is my latest victim. I've done it again. My breathing starts to quicken, my cheeks began to grow hot. I know from experience that if I don't get somewhere private and quickly, I may very well make a fool of myself in public. I quickly glance around the library for a sign pointing to a restroom. As soon as my eyes settle on it, I dash towards it, swerving between bookshelves and through narrow aisles. There's one door for a unisex bathroom, an unremarkable beige portal. The muscles of my thighs are tightening and I squirm as I reach the door. My hand grasps the cool metal handle and presses down, only to be met with a mo immovable resistance. It's locked. There's a sign on the door. I notice that I completely ignored in my haste. Closed for cleaning. Shit. Oh man, you're about to come in the aisle. <laughs> I curse despite my best efforts to keep a low profile. My head turns frantically, looking for somewhere, anywhere that I can sit down and remain out of sight while my body reacts erratically to my latest success. Oh, you busted? This guy again. I... I need to use the restroom. I hope you can tell that the expression on my face is not one of desperation to use the facilities. On it. To my surprise, Kajito strides up to the restroom door and begins to slam his fist against it. Hey, cleaning time is over. Get out of there. I hear a panicked yelp from within. Kajito's commanding voice was more than a little intimidating. Within seconds, a terrified old woman emerges. She wheels her cleaning trolley around us, bows quickly and disappears from sight. All yours. About to hold it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I dash past Kojiro, unable to believe what is happening here. I slam the door behind me and slip into a cubicle. As soon as I sit atop the toilet's closed lid, my legs begin to shake uncontrollably, and I have to lean backward to steady myself. Aichi Hanada is dead, killed in a traffic accident. That can mean anything, but I'm willing to bet that I caused his death. After seeing the photo of his dismembered corpse, he might have purposefully crashed his car. Or perhaps someone else rammed into his vehicle, intent on murdering him on behalf of Corpse Girl. I still don't know how my power works, I don't know why these victims end up dead. But the cause of death ultimately doesn't matter. What matters is that Corpse Girl is victorious once more. I find myself panting, squirming, struggling to restrain myself. She's got a serious god complex, man. Like, she needs to calm the fuck down. <laughs> Get some therapy. My vision fogs, my knuckles clench. And, with barely a fanfare, I begin to cool down all of a sudden. Just like that, the overwhelming urge to explode simply flutters away. Huh? My breathing regulates, my legs solidify and, the, and rest firmly on the ground. This... This experience wasn't nearly as staggered as the last time. Maybe... Maybe because I was so confident that this victim would die, my body already prepared itself for it. Have I already become desensitized for my ability to wield death itself? I won't pretend that I'm not disappointed. That exhilarating feeling I experienced last time, the complete and utter loss of control, it was addicting. I craved experiencing it again. Well, it looks like it's heroin for us. <laughs> Still, I need to remind myself of the most important thing. I fulfilled the request issued to Corpse Girl. That's two new victories in a row. Two victories in a single week. As long as requests keep coming in, I can keep ach achieving my goals. I can do this. Full of confidence and feeling steady once more, I exit the cubicle and leave the bathroom.
That strange man, Kajira, was waiting for me at the end of the aisle. You good? Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks for... You know, I really needed the bathroom. Of course. Been there. Gotta go when you gotta go. Look what I found. Kojita holds up a book with a plain black cover. Nobel Sinclair's latest. Dazed by the Dead. It's a ripper. Oh, what's that one about? Falling in love with the dead. Read it already last year. Time for another go. Oh, here. Kojido hands another book to me. This one's with a brown cover. An illustration on the front depicts a field of flowers. What's this? Sinclair's first ever published work. A strange flower. Title's nonsense. This is the one where he puts corpses in suits, treats them to meals at fancy restaurants. Loaned it out under my name. You take it. Return it before the due date. Can't risk getting fined. I mean, uh, if he, is he killing these people and then doing fucked up things with their corpses, or is he just stealing bodies? Because obviously both of them are a bit messed up. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if someone dug me up after I died and like took me out and treated me to a meal and shit, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't be around to see it or anything, but you know, it'd be nice to know that I'm getting about even after I'm dead. Anyway. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'll be sure to read it. Sure. Send me your thoughts and noise. Right. Be seeing you. A brief wave of his hand and he disappears behind the closest, closest shelves. I can't really get out of, over how peculiar he is, but he certainly is making an effort to be friendly. I turn the heavy book over in my hands and look inside the front cover for a publication date. 2009. It's actually not that old. Definitely not as old as the fiction I normally consume. No, oh, like Lovecraft. Yeah. Not that old. I shrug and hoist the bulky tome underneath my arm, then make for the library's exit. It's definitely a lot newer than Lovecraft, yes. I feel uncom uncommonly hungry on the way home, so much so that I decide to stop by a restaurant and get some dinner. I wonder if killing stirs my appetite. I often pass this establishment when I exit the train station in Akihabara. It's an old venue that serves traditional Japanese food as well as po popular western dishes. To say that I've always been curious about eating here would be accurate. I've been working hard lately, achieving my goals. I can afford to treat myself to a cooked meal, right? I don't think killing actually pays very well, at least not the way you do it. Why do I find it so hard to justify that? Because you don't have any money. I've been there, I know. I mean, I'm there right now. We all live there. I'm even going to eat at the booth, a booth tonight. Another rarity for me. A waitress guides me to an empty booth and I slide in before looking at a menu. The house specialty, according to the menu, is in my hands is grilled eel. Not exactly my favourite. In fact, seafood of any variety doesn't sit well in my stomach. I decide to pass on the specials in order something I know I can digest. Omu rice sounds good. I used to eat it a lot as a kid. Omelette rice and ketchup. What's not to like? Plus, it's only 700 yen before tax. Nice. The waitress returns to take my order, and I confidently point out what I'd like. She offers me a smile and hurries off to the next table. Perhaps my recent victory streak has given me my courage a boost. Because I hardly feel awkward or anxious sitting here, surrounded by people eating and drinking on all sides. I'm somewhat calm and at ease amidst the hustle and bustle of the restaurant. I always feel like it might be nice to have company. A friend perhaps, Aoi, or even Shinya, might be nice to talk to and pass the time with. Oh well. In a way I do have some company. I retrieve a book from my handbag, the very same book Kojiro lent me. And I open it up to the first chapter. Strange Flower, an odd, apparently meaningless title. Still, it comes highly recommended by an eccentric stranger, so it must be good. <laughs> anyway, that's how I base all my fucking purchasing decisions. <laughs> this TV's very good. Yes, but was it was it uh, recommended by an eccentric stranger? <laughs> then I'll take it. My meal arrives when I'm a few pages into the book. I thank the waitress and look at the omu rice before me. Before me, it smells good. It's presented beautifully. I can probably eat at least a quarter of this portion without feeling ill. I pick up a spoon and slice through the middle of the omu rice, causing a puff of steam to billow up. Throwing caution to the wind, I scoop up a good amount and bring it to my mouth. It's delicious. There's no other word to describe it. The convenience store meals I normally eat can't compare to something like this. The egg is soft, the rice is fluffy, and there's just enough ketchup along the top. I take a second mouthful, then a third. I can't help but giggle a little at the thought of myself sitting here eating like a normal person. All the people around me probably think I'm a normal person too. Mr. Gill's sitting at a restaurant eating her dinner. 
Another quiet giggle escapes my lips and I gently dab my mouth with a napkin. I set my spoon to the side and return to the book in front of me. The author of this work certainly is interesting. Nobel Sinclair. According to the bio inside the front cover, he moved to Japan from overseas at a young age. The book was written originally in Japanese. It's not a translation, but even so, the writing style is quite unusual. I can't quite put my finger on what's strange about it. Maybe it's the lack of complex kanji used throughout. Everything's written in rather simply in hiragana, almost like the intended audience is elementary school kids. Like, I can read hiragana, but I can't read kanji, so <laughs> it sounds perfect. <laughs> but that can't be right. The themes contained within are truly deceiving. Maybe the author just doesn't have the greatest comprehension of writing in Japanese. It's true that a lot of adults have trouble with complex kanji. Professional authors, though, not so much. Anyway, it's not like it matters too much. The book is interesting enough to keep me turning pages. I must be completely absorbed in reading before I... Because before I know it, a waitress is politely letting me know that the restaurant is closing soon. I nod and look at the plate of omu rice in front of me. The meal has gone cold, and I only ate three bites. Still, I'm feeling full now, and I really enjoyed what I did eat. I don't even feel any added weight on my hips. As I get to my feet, this definitely is a positive thing. How would three spoons of rice posit in any way add any weight to your hips? That's insane. <laughs> I stretch my arms and legs, put my book in my bag, and offer the waitress some money along with the bill. If three spoons of rice puts on weight, then Jesus Christ. I think we might all have to just give up eating altogether. A blast of frigid night air nearly sweeps me off my feet when I step out of the restaurant. If I'd known the weather was going to take a turn for the worse, I would have brought my scarf and jacket. It's the end of spring, so unpredictable cold weather is pretty rare. I guess I can't be blamed for not bundling up. Anyway, it's not raining, and I'm close to home, so it shouldn't be a problem. I head down the street, and watch a few shop owners closing their stores for the night. They don't pay me any mind as I want to buy. My phone bursts to life and rings out in the quiet night air. I grab it and press, the, press it close to my ear for warmth. Hello? Aoi? Noriko? Hello? Um, is this a bad time? No, no, I'm just walking home. You're out at this time of night? That's... that's not like you. I stopped somewhere to eat. What's up? You stopped to eat? Um, say, about the new job. Mm hmm? Hmm? What is it? I spoke to the manager at the maid cafe, but he said I can't quit. He said that? Oh, well, it's not up to him. You have every right to quit. Did you tell him you've landed a new job? Yes, I told him. But he said he spent so much time and money training me that if I quit now, he'll treat it as stealing from the company and he'll call the police. You can't do that. Oh, what a load of crap! Hang on. Are you at the cafe now? Yes, I just finished my shift. We're closing up. I'll be right there. I'm only a minute away anyway. I'm going to give your manager a piece of my mind. No. Noriko, you can't... Just watch me. I'll be right there. Let's mess him up. I end the call despite Aoi's objections. I can't believe how furious I am. Aoi finally has an escape route from that god-awful job and now the manager won't let her quit? That has to be illegal. Yeah. I've never met her manager, but I can just imagine his type. A self-important, wretched, greedy pig. Thinks he's kind of... He's, he's the king of the world because he runs a shady maid cafe in the back streets. Well, I won't stand for it. People like him are the ones that should be reported to Corpse Girl's website. I'd love to target victims like that. I change direction and take up a running pose. The cool air against my face is kind of nice, now that my body is warming up a little. Thankfully, there's hardly anyone around this time of night, so I don't feel particularly embarrassed by running in public. I'm not a terribly fit person, so it isn't long before I feel out of breath. I come to a stop at the end of the back at the end of the street, heaving and clutching my chest. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I'm okay. Deep breaths. Come on, man. I mean, like, it can't can't be that hard to move yourself when you weigh so little that you're worried three spoons of rice is gonna add to your weight. After taking a moment to collect myself, I start back out, walking briskly this time. I can see the maid cafe's illuminated sign ahead of me. I approach the entrance and read the neon board. Chateau de Crystal. Welcome home, master. Drinks from just 400 yen. Table charge, 500 yen per person. Over till 10pm, every night. 
I pass the sign and reach the door for the door handle, just as somebody hurriedly throws the door open and emerges. Uh, uh, Noriko? Owie, told you I'd be here. I, I'm really glad to see you. Owie gives me a brief wave. She fidgets nervously and straightens the ruffles in her dress. Uh, I can't believe you have to wear this ridiculous outfit. Yeah, but the costume isn't the worst part of the job. Uh, I know. Listen, is your manager still here? Howie hesitates and shakes her head sadly. You just missed him. There are only a few girls inside closing up. Damn it. Ugh, I really wanted to give him a piece of my mind. Noriko, it's fine. I can continue working here. It's not so bad. Hell no! Don't even pretend it's okay! This place is torturing don't you! don't show up on Monday. What the fuck's he gonna do about it? You have that customer that always gropes you, and now your manager is controlling you? I won't stand for it, and you shouldn't either. But, but, what can I do? I'm honestly stumped by the question. In all my hastiness to get here, I never even thought through a plan for Aoi. Leave your uniform there, and just don't show up on Monday. What the fuck's he gonna do? Call the police? I mean, that's what he said he would do, but he doesn't have a leg to stand on. Uh... Damn it, that heartbreaking expression on her face. I just want to grab her, hug her, tell her everything's going to be okay. So why can't I? Owie, hmm? I know you don't feel like it, but you're the strongest girl I know. All the shit you've dealt with over the years, all the shit you're still dealing with, you're brave, whether you know it or not. My issues pale in comparison to yours, but you still get up each and every day and do your best. I'm proud of you, and and I want to make things easier for you. Come work with me at Temujin. Just leave this place behind. Forget all about it. Noriko, you're my best friend. You always will be. Even if we can't be anything more than that, I'm happy just having you in my life. I'd do anything for you, Aoi. I hope you realize that. Of course. I know. Thank you, Noriko. Let's get out of here. It's really late. Come back to my place. You... you know I can't. I... all my things are at home, and I need... I need to check everything first. Otherwise... I nod calmly. I understand. I can't push it too much. Don't worry. I get it. And... and... the thing is, I can't just run away from this place. That stalking customer, he knows where I live, and, well, if I stop showing up to work, he said he'll visit me at home. Why don't we go to the police? I can't do that! Without warning, Owie bursts into tears, just as rain begins to spill from the clouds. <laughs> I can't get him in trouble. I just can't. He... he's... Owie... What? What is he? He's... family. A gust of wind blows down the narrow street, causing my hair to whip wildly in my face. I brush it out of my eyes and mouth, only to see Owie standing still, her head down. A stalker? He's... family? I... I could never bring myself to tell you. But surely you must have wondered why I've put up with it for so long. I... I don't know what to say. I'm stunned. You're putting up with it because you don't want him arrested. Yes. If he goes to prison, the rest of my family will disown me. Then... I'll truly have no one. You have me. You know what I mean. I'm... I'm just going to go home for tonight. Thanks for coming out to see me, Noriko. Aoi turns on her heel and strolls away, the click-clack of her shoes against the wet pavement echoing through the street. Aoi. She doesn't hear me breathe her name as she disappears into the darkness. That poor girl. There has to be something I can do. <gasps> My god, I get a choice! It's our first choice. Save. Quick, save. <laughs> now we have to go after her. Go after her. I can't let her go. I can't let her just walk away as sad and helpless as she is. My legs lurch forward of their own volition, propelling my body through the rain-soaked street. Owie! Owie, come back! My shout echoes into the night, my weightless words falling through the air, 
Like the very rain that patters against my face. Owie's silhouette is just out of reach. If only my weak body could pick up its pace, I might be able to reach her before she fades away. Stop! Her unexpected command fill, fulfills its purpose. I halt, my shoes skidding along the wet ground. Owie is closer than I expected her to be. Perhaps due to some trick of the light and rain, she simply seemed further away to my tired eyes. Owie, please, let me help you. There's nothing to be done. Why can't you take a hint? I... You just never give up, do you? You just want to smother me. You don't trust me to handle things on my own. You did ask for help. Just saying. That's not it. I just care for you so much. I know that. You think you haven't made that clear in the past? Rarely have I seen Owie this angry. She's well past the point of being simply upset now. She's truly furious. Have I ever stepped to boundary? You're not my guardian angel, or my savior, or whatever. This is my life, Noriko. It's not your sick fantasy, where you swoop in and act like my knight in shining armor. Howie, I... Shut up! Just shut up! You always take it one step too far. Just leave me alone. I can't get another word in before she vanishes into the night. I reach a hand out into the darkness like some foolish attempt to stop her, but I know it's pointless. She made her thoughts perfectly clear. She doesn't need or want my help. Even if she cares for me, she doesn't love me in the same way I love her, and I don't think she ever will. I sigh and look up at the thick cloak of clouds above. The rain continues to fall. Sunday afternoon. Oh man, it's nearly time to go back to work. Today drags on and on. Since I don't work weekends, I never really know what to do with myself during my free time. The library yesterday was nice, but I don't want to hang out there again today. So far I've spent the day simply reading at home and brewing the occasional cup of tea to starve off, stave off my hunger. I keep checking my phone, but now he hasn't replied to any of my texts. Even when I call, she lets it go to voicemail. I didn't even have any new requests to attend to. I was hoping I would get at least one this weekend to occupy my time. To take a break from reading Strange Flower, I decided to browse through noise to see what's happening in my social circle. Though I'm not close to any of the people I'm connected to, save for Owie, reading through their posts always lifts my mood. Rather annoyingly, the first post I come across is from Tomoe. Tomomo. Nine minutes ago. Bitches be trippin' if they think they're gonna steal my man. We thick as thieves. You getting lucky tonight? XX. The garbled post is accompanied by a photo of her and Shinya getting cozy together. Shinya looks more than a little nervous. I'd be willing to bet that Tomoe is the first girl he's ever snuggled like this. I can't quite figure out why so, she's so interested in him, or why he's into her for that matter. Well, she's interested in him because she thinks you're interested in him and she just wants to fuck with you. Why he's interested, I don't know. He seems scared. <laughs> At first I thought Tomoe was just trying to bug me, to annoy me by pursuing someone she thought I'd want. But surely this has taken it too far, right? Haven't I made it clear that I just don't care? As for Shinya, Maybe that boy really is into the blow-up doll look. I guess I understand him less than I originally thought. I noticed that I'd been frowning while looking at Tomoe's post, so I decided to slam my finger down on the thumbs down button. A little text box below the post now reads, Noriko Kurosawa dislike this. My frown breaks and I smirk. It feels somewhat satisfying to publicly dislike Tomoe's posts. I can imagine Tomoe's face going tomato red when she reads the notification. <laughs> With a little giggle I scroll past the post and keep browsing my feed. As expected, it doesn't take long to find a post from Shinya himself. It's out of character for him, but he's actually not posting about criminal cases and detective work for once. Shinya. Shinya with a capital S. Fujikawa. 13 hours ago. I never believed in love until I met her. She swept me off my feet and showed me how to become a better man. She makes me want to be the best person I can be. My heart goes out to my darling Tomoe, two days together and counting. I look forward to every day because of you. Thank you. I involuntarily gag and continue scrolling. Nothing else in my newsfeed really compares to those last posts. My sister wrote something about her sucky job, and a few co-workers posted about how grief-stricken they were about Akane Tsurumaki passing away unexpectedly. Akane Tsurumaki, followed closely by Aichi, Aichi Hanada, and long before bo them both, Ruri Hatano, the one who started it all. Three strangers, three people dead, all because of Corpse Girl. People wanted them dead, and because of that, I also want them dead. I won't forget their names. When Corpse Girl rises above the muck and filth in this world and truly becomes famous, I'll share a toast to their memories. 
Until then, I need to trudge forward. I need new targets, new victims to launch Corpse Girl's name into the stars. It sounds like the same kind of rhetoric that, like, people have when they walk into a school to do a mass shooting. They're like, man, I'm going to be famous when people see me do a mass shooting. Is that really the fucking motivation here? <laughs> what the fuck? If Corpse Girl's website becomes more than an urban legend, more than a rumor whispered of in the shadows, then... No, I need to take it slow. I can't get too far ahead of myself. I just need to put in a lot of work before I can attain my goal. But the only way I can move forward is if more requests come through the website. There has to be a way to promote the site. Flashy advertising is out of the question. I don't want the site looking like a gimmick people can visit simply to pass the time. I need word of mouth. Testimonials. So far the site has claimed three victims. I need the original requesters to spread the word about how effective the website really is. Yes, that would be perfect, but I obviously can't get in touch with them now. They remain anonymous when, when they request a death. No one would willingly put their contact details when doing something so shady anyway. I sigh and scratch my head thinking about it like this. Won't do me any good. Maybe I should come back to it later. I reach for my laptop, sitting on the couch next to me. Maybe I'll just take one more look for new requests. You never know, right? I log into the administration panel for Corpse Girl's website and check for notifications. One new request. Request details. Today, 3.31pm local time. Victim's phone. Downloading image attachment. Wait, 331? This was submitted just a few minutes ago. What are the chances I would check incoming requests so soon after receiving a new one? My heart begins to race as the attached photo downloads to my computer. I'm excited about the prospect of working on another new on a new request for the rest of the evening. Who will be the poor sucker to succumb to Corpse Girl's whims? Will another beautiful corpse be left in my wake? Oh, it's us. My heart skips a beat and my hands instantly turn cold. What the hell? A photo of myself appears on the screen. It's the very same image used for my company ID tag. I'm not smiling in the photo, or in real life. Is this some kind of joke? Somebody's requested my death. How is that surprising? Somebody's requested my death? <laughs> Somebody wants me dead? That'd be fucked up though. Tomoe! <laughs> that stupid, vapid bitch! Tomoe Watanabe, the one person who hates me more than I hate myself. Of course she's the one who uploaded my photo, of course she wants Corpse Girl to take care of me. She's been looking for somebody to test the website on. Her noise post from the start of the week confirms that. Do you remember at the very beginning when we were playing as that other girl? Um... That bumped into Aoi on the escalator? Aoi said that there was someone that she wanted to try it on, but she didn't want to test it out without knowing first or something? Remember? Maybe it was her that, that's trying to get us killed. And she's been getting increasingly obsessed with tormenting me lately. I'm willing to bet that when I disliked her latest post, it finally triggered her to request my death. <laughs> Tomoe, you brainless whore! I am Corpse Girl! <laughs> Take it down a notch. <laughs> In a fit of manic laughter, I set to work dismembering my photo. I'm going to make my corpse look so realistic that she'll think I really, she really succeeded in getting me killed. And then, when her guard is down... <laughs> Stop being so crazy, it's cringe. <laughs> Alright, we need to wrap this episode up. No sign of Sato yet? I wonder if she got held up. We, we got no more time for today. We're gonna wrap this one up here. She's man, she, when she's stoic? She calls herself fucking stoic? She's the least stoic person I've ever seen. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks again out and I'll see you in the next one.